Now that we have our environment set up, let's make a new folder called My Ghost. You can call this whatever you want. It simply will hold the content of our ghost theme. So once we have that, we can CD into My Ghost and we can create a new ghost environment. We can do that with ghost install local. This creates us a local development environment for ghost. I definitely would not recommend that you deploy this environment, one that's created with local to production because it's recommended simply for development purposes only. And if you want to then deploy this to production later on, you can simply run ghost install. That helps you get set up with a production environment much easier. And of course the ghost documentation can guide you through this process. But at this point in time, we just want a development environment and ghost install local does that for us. So the CLI tells us that we can access our blog at this URL. So as you can see, the ghost CLI has said that we've done everything correctly. We have all of these tick marks. And then it tells us we can access our blog at HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 2369. This port could be different for you depending on the amount of ghost installations you currently have running. So I'm going to navigate to this inside of my browser. And when I do so, you can see that we have this ghost installation. We can select a post. We can see information about that post as well as other posts at the bottom here and an author profile. So we're going to be creating a theme based on this API and these set of functions. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the best theme in the world, but by the end of it, you should now have a lot of skills related to ghost theme development that you otherwise may not have had.